So I've had a bunch of questions over the last few weeks and months about the amount of rotational work we've been doing in our program over the last I mean, two or three years, but really a lot over the last year. Uh, it goes back to what I was talking about in the last video. I think the spinal engine, fascia, tensegrity is really important. And if I think that, well, how do I train it? Well, I guess I have to be a little creative here, right? Because there's not a lot of stuff out there on the training of these things. And maybe I have to apply some educated guesswork. When it, came, when it comes to getting stronger, we kind of know how to do that, right? We just put more load on the bar. When it comes to getting more powerful, we know that. But when it comes to building a better spinal engine, well, it's quite a bit different, right? In fact, what do I even mean by a better spinal engine in the first place? The way I look at it is like this. If I have an athlete who is struggling to access good range of hip extension, then I build hip extension pattern work into almost their entire program. It will be a part of their warm-up, their therapy, their weight room, and their homework. It's the same with a spinal engine pattern. If I think it's important, and my hypothesis here is that it is, then I build it into everything that we do. It's in the warm-up with PVC pipes and with med balls, as we see here. It's also in the runs that we do, where often we run with no arms, for example. It's in the weight room work that we do, where we program in loaded rotational work. It's in the type of therapy that we do, and it's in the athlete's homework. It's like anything, right? If you think it's important, you have to work on it. You just can't do it twice a week and expect results. Consistency is key to improvement in all things.